Hey guys and welcome to another video by artincontext.org where we explore various art related topics. My name is Matt and in today's tutorial we will be looking at how to paint a butterfly with watercolour. Now butterflies are probably some of the most unique and fantastical looking creatures to draw or paint and also very versatile in terms of being an addition to your own artwork but it is also a really great subject matter to explore the watercolour medium and see how the watercolour medium can be used to create unique features in that of the butterfly. Uh, in this particular tutorial we'll be learning how to draw the very iconic Menelius blue uh, morpho butterfly and this is just a great way to explore some fundamental and essential skills and techniques within the watercolor medium without over complicating the watercolor application process. So with that being said um, we're gonna get started with a simple uh, sketch of this butterfly where we start to work out the structure and scale of these different features and this is something to consider when we're trying to capture the uh, mirrored quality between the left and the right side of the wings. Now we can start by a general outline where we uh, start to form the butterfly. So for instance when we think about the top wings we want to think about a more triangular structure. Uh, we see that that triangular structure um, kind of has a 90 degree or almost 90 degree angle between the bottom and the outer sides of that top wing structure. So we can see how the top wing structure from the head area starts to curve upwardly and outwardly and then eventually uh, starts to go downward in a vertical direction and then ultimately back towards the uh, body in a horizontal direction. Now the body itself isn't necessarily too large in relation to the wing structure so what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time with our pencil and eraser slowly tweaking and editing our sketch and making sure we capture the general outline of the butterfly structure as accurately as possible. Now as we proceed with our pencil sketch of our butterfly something to note is that the lower wings are both on the left and right side have less of a triangular shape to them. They have more of a hexagonal shape or a circular shape and what we'll find is that there's more curvature near the bottom outer edges of the lower wings um, as they slowly start to arc back upward towards the body. Now again we also want to consider the scale in relation to or compared to that of the top wings. So the wings are quite similar in scale but the shapes are different. So the top wings have this triangular shape whereas the lower wings have this more circular or hexagonal shape. The lower wings also start to have these grooves that create um, a indentation uh, quality or a ridge quality around the edging of the lower wings and this is another feature we just want to bear in mind um, of our butterfly sketch. Now we want to make sure we take our time with the sketching process making sure we accurately represent the butterfly features uh, in terms of scale and structure as best we can before we start applying paint to our drawing. Uh, the idea is also to make sure that we capture the scale as best we can especially when it comes to the body in relation to the wings as well as the lower wings in relation to the upper wings. We also want to make sure that the lower wings again have this more circular structure um, with ridges along the edging of that circular structure um, and that they kind of arc back upwards and flow towards the lower abdomen area of the butterfly. Now just make sure you spend some time on the sketch before you add in painting. Um, obviously with the painterly marks it's definitely something we can't go back on so making sure we have our sketch done as accurately as possible is really important. Now when it comes to the blue morpho butterfly it's really important for us to consider the coloration or the unique blue coloration it has uh, present within its wings and what we want to do now is we want to spend some time making sure we develop a blue mix uh, with our paint um, and trying to accurately represent that blue coloration as best we can with our paint mix. So a good suggestion is to look at some um, reference images on the internet to see the type of blue coloration that it has and if you look at some of these blue morpho butterflies what you'll notice is that it does have this deep blue but because the butterfly wings are so thin they have this slight transparent nature so that deep blue tends to also shift into a light blue uh, due to the fact that light shines through the butterfly wings. So what we want to do is we want to create a very of both a deeper blue and a lighter blue and this way we can create um, a little bit more tonal variation within our butterfly uh, and exploring variations of blue within our watercolor painting. So take your time making sure that you work on one wing at a time and this is where we're going to start applying some blue paint to one wing at a time. Uh, when you apply the paint to a wing what you want to 
do is you want to work from the outside in. So what I mean by this is you kind of want to establish the outline, kind of using the pencil lines to guide you where you slowly go over the ridges. Uh, this is particularly true for the lower wings due to their ridged quality on the outer edges of the lower wings. So what you want to do is you just want to be cautious with your application of blue paint, uh, but you also want to work quite fast at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish layers within our butterfly drawing. Uh, right now what we're trying to do is establish this blue layer and then once dried we're going to paint on top of it with more details uh, and marks that obviously represent um, other features of the butterfly. So the idea is to make sure that you are uh, wetting your brush and then loading your brush with some paint and then working on one wing at a time making sure you create a seamless uh, blue in each wing. Um, what you can also start to consider again is lightening some of the wings. So for instance if the lower wing or one of the lower wings is slightly darker you can make one of the top wings slightly lighter and again this is just a great way to create a little bit of a tonal variation within our butterfly painting um, and doing so we also just give it a little bit more of a nuanced quality and making it look a little less flat uh, by indicating that some light is present or shining through one of the wings now we don't necessarily want to rush this process again all of these processes should be done with some patience and some caution and this is especially true when we're dealing with the painting process again once we have painted similar to ink once it's on the paper we can't take it back so we really want to make sure we are being careful with our application process another thing to consider is that when you create subtle distinctions between blues within the wings especially between the lower and upper wing on each side uh, this is also a good way to create a distinction between the wings so the colors don't merge into one another and ultimately seem like one large pattern so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the color variations on the left side um, or on the left lower and upper wing are slightly different and then we want to do the same on the right side so having these subtle differences in blues is something to consider during your paint application process um, and this is something you can do in terms of lightening a mix or darkening a mix um, but what we do want to do is make sure we fill each wing entirely making sure it is coated with some blue paint. Now once we have completed filling in each of the wings with our blue paint we're going to proceed to adding in some of the more external features on top of the uh, wings starting with one wing at a time and this is where we want to actually start considering the unique features of the blue morpho butterfly. So for instance the blue morpho butterfly has this dark edging along the forewing and and hind wing and this is something we really want to capture as accurately as possible through the utilization of some uh, black paints. Now this is where we're going to start using our black paints in a more drawing style format. So what we want to do now is we want to actually load our brushes up with some black paint and we're going to slowly start to work in these features starting at the bottom left wing where we'll start to incorporate the thick dark um, outlining that forms along the inside edging of the bottom wing. Now what we also can do is we can start to already darken the entire body of the the butterfly and we can make this entirely black however what we do want to make sure is that we're working with different size brushes because what we're going to find is that some of these features are really small uh, like the veins that run throughout the different wings or the thin edging that runs along the external outline of each of these wings both the upper and lower wings uh, but we do want to make sure that we incorporate black into the entire body section we also want to make sure that as we do so we are maintaining that uh, accurate body um, outline so this is where we want to make sure to use a smaller brush or a thinner brush uh, keeping our lines inside of the pencil marks um, and that way we don't necessarily deviate from the body structure so that we can maintain an accurate representation of the body as a feature within our butterfly painting. Now we can keep the body quite small. Again, the body is quite small in relation to the wings, but what we're gonna start doing now is we're gonna start working uh, from the left side of the wings and start to work a black outline around the um, edges of both the left um, bottom and top wing. Now this is where, again, we wanna start considering uh, looking at some reference images of a blue morpho butterfly butterfly um, and what you'll find is that both on the uh, forewing and hindwing the butterfly has this dark edging that runs along the edges of 
uh, both the upper and lower wings. However, it is important to note that this uh, dark edging does fluctuate in size and thickness and this is especially true um, as we come to the inner lower section of the hind wings or the lower wings. So bearing this in mind in terms of having a more accurate representation of this feature um, is important to consider um, and this is why maybe looking at some reference material is really important. Now as we proceed with this process we're going to make sure to start um, with the outline of all the wings before we start working in the veins that actually define and distinguish the cells within the butterfly wings. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that as we proceed with this process we are already considering how this black edging flows into the different vein like structures um, and ultimately creates these segments um, otherwise known as cells within the butterfly wings. Now it's really important again to consider the fact that the left side and the right side of both the hind and um, fore wings or otherwise known as the upper and lower wings are a mirrored uh, image of one another. So what we are doing on the left side of the butterfly on the left wings is something we want to obviously do and replicate uh, at least for the most part on the right side and this is to have a more accurate representation of our blue morpho butterfly and the features represented in the wings. However that being said we'll find that this isn't necessarily going to be the case for the veins when we start adding in the veins which are those lines that run through the wings. Um, so those vary uh, and are slightly different um, but for the most part the edging will tend to be the same and this is especially true for that thick edging line near the inner section of the hind or lower wings. Now once we have completed the edging and we feel that it has this accurate representation on, in terms of a mirrored image between the left and right side we're going to start working on the veins and uh, even though the veins do have a subtle difference between the left and the right side for the most part they are quite similar so we do want to maintain this general mirrored quality um, especially between the top two wings and the lower two wings so the top two wings will have a mirrored quality and then the lower two wings will have a mirrored quality uh, what we do want to do is we want to start with the main um, segments uh, that are established by the cells in the top wings and this is where we start to see that the cells are uh, very uniquely similar in the top wings uh, near the top section of the top wings so so at this point again we start to consider the scale of the brush we use and then we also want to start looking at a reference in terms of how these veins are dispersed throughout the upper and lower wings now when it comes to um, painting in the veins on the top wings uh, we really want to make sure we use a really small thin brush and this is because the veins that are present within the wings uh, tend to be very thin so we want to make sure that we are representing that as accurately as possible um, another important thing to consider again is that these veins tend to sprout from the connection points where the wings connect to the body so we'll find that they tend to flow into that corner point um, and then flow outwardly to the outer edges of the wings so making sure that you go um, through one wing at a time is the best way to do so what we'll also find as we continue with this process is that the dark rim that runs along the upper wings uh, along the outer edge um, of the upper wings kind of flows into those veins so we'll find that there is a seamless um, integration between the dark edging uh, that forms along the upper wings and the veins so we really want to make sure that those veins kind of flow into that dark edging now a good suggestion would also be to spend some time on one uh, side of the butterfly so working on the top wing and the bottom wing on the right side uh, making sure you work on these vein structures making sure they sprout from the body and flow throughout and branch out uh, throughout the entire wing structure so again these vein structures stem from the body and then they flow towards the outer edges of each of these uh, wings now again it is really helpful to look at some reference images of blue morpho butterflies because what you'll find as you paint in these uh, different veins or these vein lines and as they determine uh, and establish the uh, size of the cells within the wings is that there are these larger cell structures um, that tend to be present within the upper and the lower wings. From there what you'll find is that these veins then branch off into slightly smaller cells um, and that is the uh, more um, non-mirrored like cell features that we can obviously represent uh, between the left and the right side. So again we just want to make sure we are taking our time slowly 
painting in these vein structures, making sure we're establishing the cells, making sure we work on one wing at a time until that wing is completed, then slowly transitioning to the other side. Um, again, try to work on one side of the butterfly and that way you have a reference point in terms of drawing these veins uh, on the other side of the butterfly. So try to work on the upper and lower wings on the right side and then once that's done you can use it as a reference point for the left wings um, and the features inside. Now again, we do want to make sure that the outer rim, both on the left and right side for both the upper and lower wings are flowing into these vein structures. We can also consider using a really dark blue. So we don't necessarily need to use a black paint. Um, what we can use is a dark blue paint. And what that's going to do is it's going to give a little bit more of a transparent and more naturalistic coloration in the uh, vein structures that run through the different wings. Um, so that's something to consider that might be really helpful what you can do is near the body and the outer edges you can start to use some black paint and that's where you can allow that black paint to seamlessly transition into those vein structures again make sure you spend time on each wing one at a time make sure you are uh, mirroring these vein structures uh, between the left and the right side um, you can have moments that are slightly different in terms of the smaller cells but we do want to make sure that the larger segments um, and cells are uh, quite similar or at least the same between the left and the right side. Again this is especially true for the top wings as we see that there are these main um, deviations between the veins and cells uh, established along the top section of the top wings. So we do want to have a general similarity or at least predominantly a mirrored effect between the left and the right side of the top wings. Now once we have worked our way through each of these wings and we are satisfied with the uh, integration of these vein structures, we have established these cells, we will now proceed with adding in some darker blue marks uh, within our butterfly drawing and now this is where we're going to be a little bit more strategic in terms of having a more drawing style approach to create more textural variety throughout the wings. Now once we have established the uh, underlayer of blue um, paint as well as the veins we're going to move on to integrating these darker um, blue lines uh, throughout the wing structure and this is where we're going to use the veins to kind of to guide us in the directional flow of how these blue marks will be integrated into our butterfly painting now this is where we start to kind of slowly incorporate these blue marks throughout the wings um, in between the various cells but again we're not necessarily trying to color in the entire butterfly drawing what we want to do is we want to work with a smaller brush and kind of integrate these more drawing style lines that flow from the body and disperse throughout the wings. Uh, this is where we can also start to create little lines that um, stem from the outer edges of the wings and kind of, um, kind of flow back into the larger surface area of each of the wings. By doing this, what we'll find is the little blue marks that we layer on top now are going to create a little bit more texture and three dimensionality within our butterfly painting. Now, again, Again, the idea is to, for one, make sure you use a small brush because we really want to make sure these lines and strokes are quite small. But then the other thing is we don't want to overpower the uh, first layer of blue paint with these new darker blue marks. Uh, the idea is to also be strategic with how we integrate these blue marks. So for instance, in the top wings, what we can do is we can make these sprouting or strokes that form from the body and disperse throughout the wing. But we don't necessarily need to cover the entire wing. What we can do is work along the outer edges and then work along the inner edges near the body. The same for the lower section. What we can do is we want to make sure we are working from the body section and then making these marks flowing and dispersing throughout the lower wings and then working from the outer edges and making these strokes and marks flowing into the middle section or larger surface area of the lower wings. Uh, again, with this process, what you want to do is you just want to take your time. Uh, remember that we are defining a monochromatic butterfly through the application of a variety of different blues. So this is also where you want to consider the spectrum of blues and see how different kinds of blues can be used to create more shadowy effects and also how we can be quite sparing um, and scarce with our mark making with these darker blue features to allow the lighter features that we have established earlier on to still be present within the wings. Uh, the intention here is to again not overpower the wings with these darker blue marks but to create a variety um, and 
uh, tonal variation between these different blues ultimately to give more texture to our um, butterfly painting. Uh, we also don't necessarily want to overpower the very uh, faint and thin vein structure so if we feel that the blues are overpowering them we can start to integrate a little bit of thin black lining into those veins to just keep them uh, emphasized and very distinct throughout the butterfly sketch. Other than that we can also start transitioning into the more contextualizing features where we focus a little bit on the head and the antenna making sure that we emphasize those details. At this point we can also start going over our painting and seeing if the black Black edges need a little bit of touch-ups um, or if we need to refine any of the veins that disperse throughout our butterfly drawing. Another and very important uh, key concept is also knowing when to stop. Um, we don't necessarily want to overpower our butterfly painting and we don't want to lose those very delicate earlier base layers that we have established in our painting. Um, but otherwise guys, that is it. This is the general process of how to approach a butterfly painting considering its shape uh, first and foremost and then establishing a sketch is the number one step in terms of having a more accurate representation of such a unique creature. From there you want to consider the coloration within the creature uh, see how the different colors, especially in this case, a monochromatic uh, color can shift um, within the various wings and then see how we can use these different colors to integrate and ultimately emphasize the various features such as veins um, and then textural qualities within the wings. And otherwise that is it guys, this is the general and simple process of how to paint a butterfly using watercolor. If you found this um, tutorial really interesting, please drop a like and a subscribe, this helps us to grow the channel and ultimately enables us to make more art related content for you guys and if you are interested in other related topics similar to this please let us know in the comment section below otherwise guys that is it from me thanks again until next time cheers